Welcome. This problem has to do with an astronaut orbiting the moon. Now being an astronaut is something that is often held out as being worthy of one's dreams. You can be anything you want to be, they tell you. You could be an astronaut. I would suggest there are many professions worthy of your dreams, whether it be the profession of arms, or farming, or manufacturing, parenting, teaching, engineering, becoming a pilot. All of these things need qualified people. Now I saw a poster the other day that surprised me and inspired me at the same time. It said if you want your dreams to come true, start by waking up. I'm Dr. Courtney. This problem involves putting together several physics concepts. Because we're looking for um, a period of time that, for the astronaut to be out of communication, that involves knowing the distance that he travels and how fast he's going in that command module. Now to find out how fast the command module is going, we will use Newton's second law for uniform circular motion. The forces in that law are coming from the law of universal gravitation. And so you'll see that we'll be using these together. We'll call the speed of the module uh, V sub C, C for command. So let's just make our note that the force comes from gravitation. And then we'll use the definition of the period, which we'll call capital T. And we're told that the astronaut is out of communication for half that time. So that's what we're looking for. As we develop this problem, we'll start with a sketch. And my sketch is not going to be to scale. We have the moon. The moon has a radius r sub m. And then the command module is orbiting the moon at a distance of 120 kilometers. So D is 120 kilometers. When we compute Newton's second law for uniform circular motion, the acceleration is expressed as the square of the speed divided by the radius. So what radius are we talking about? We need to be very careful that the radius we're interested in is actually the sum of the radius of the moon plus the additional distance the astronaut is above the moon. So the r we're interested in is equal to the radius of the moon plus that distance. Looking up the radius of the moon, we find that it's 1.74 times 10 to the 6th meters. And so plus this is 0.12 times 10 to the 6th meters. And so the radius that we will be using is 1.86 times 10 to the 6th meters. Write that more clearly. Okay, so our plan, first of all, is to find the speed of the command module using Newton's second law for uniform circular motion. So to do this, we're going to express the net force in terms of the quantities that appear in the universal law of gravitation, which is the gravitational constant, the mass of the moon, the mass of the command module, and the radius. And then we can express the acceleration in terms of the speed of the command module and the radius. And then we want to go ahead and solve for that speed of the command module. Now often I tell you to keep things in symbolic form until we need them. At this point in this problem it is appropriate then to substitute values and get a number for the speed of the command module.
then in the second part we're going to use the definition of the period. And what we're looking for is half of the period. And so we're going to express T in terms of the distance traveled, which is the circumference of the orbit. And the speed, which we would have just computed in step one. And then we can go ahead and compute what half of that period would be. So I think we're ready to go. Newton's second law says that the net force is the mass times the acceleration. What is that net force? It comes from the universal law of gravitation and it is expressed as the gravitational constant times the mass of the moon times the mass of the command module divided by the radius squared. That's going to be equal to, let's go ahead and substitute for the acceleration. The mass on the right hand side is the mass of the command module because that is the motion that we're analyzing at this time. The acceleration is the speed of that command module squared divided by the radius. We see we can simplify some things. The mass of the command module cancels out. One term of the radius cancels out. And so we can solve for the speed, V sub C, is going to be gravitational constant times the mass of the moon divided by R, all the square root of that. Now let's go ahead and compute our value for this speed. Gravitational constant is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 and the units are newtons times meters squared over kilograms squared. The mass of the moon is 7.35 times 10 to the 22nd kilograms divided by the total radius, which we computed earlier as 1.86 times 10 to the 6 meters. And we must not forget to take the square root of that value. And we come up with a speed, therefore, of 1623.49 meters per second. Now that may seem like way too many significant digits. If that were our final answer, that would be the case. But since we have more computations to do, let's wait to round until the end. Now we're ready for the definition of the period. So half of the period is going to be half of the distance over the speed. So what was that for this problem? The distance is the circumference of the orbit. So that's 2 times pi times the radius of the orbit divided by the speed that we just computed. And we see that this 2 and the 1 half cancel and then we can substitute values Half the period, then, is going to be equal to 3.14159 times the radius, 1.86 times 10 to the 6th meters, divided by the speed that we computed here, 1623.49 meters per second. And so we have that half the period is equal to 3,599.49. 26 seconds. Now before we report our answer, let's consider significant figures. Our given values, some of them were to three significant figures, some were to two, so we'll restrict our answer to two. The astronaut is out of communication for about 3,600 seconds, which is about an hour. 3,600 seconds is exactly an hour. How can we develop some confidence that we have the correct answer? Well, we'll assess that answer by starting with our units. 
we had many units appear in this expression when we substituted values in to compute the speed. So let's evaluate those units uh, separately. We had newtons, which is a kilogram times meter over second squared. So that's just this newtons right here. We still have meters squared over kilograms squared. And then we have kilograms and over all over meters. And then we were to take the square root of that entire expression. So let's take a look at this. We have kilograms times kilograms, which would be kilograms squared, divided by kilograms squared. So those terms cancel. We have a meters divided by meters, so those cancel. We're left with meters squared over seconds squared, and the square root would be meters per second. We were computing a speed in that calculation, and so that's the units that we would expect. So that's good news. It's easier when we're looking at the period. We just had meters over meters per second, which leaves us in units of seconds, and so that also checks out. So for step two, we have meters over meters per second. That seconds, that checks out. The next thing that you'd want to do is to make sure that you used the correct radius. In this type of problem, that's an easy thing to make a mistake. And so you want to double check that you did indeed use the radius that is appropriate for this problem. So by checking your units and double checking the values you substituted for the quantities, you can develop confidence that your answer is correct.